Good morning. I'm working on an approach to urban agriculture called Third Millennium Farming, which from now on I'll abbreviate to 3MF. 3MF is about using city biowastes such as grey water and black water to grow microcrops such as algae and grass, which along with some additional types of city biowaste such as compost and industrial waste, will be used as feed for micro livestock, insects, which will then be humanely euthanized, baked, and pulverized to produce a new ingredient called protein flour. The main focus of my research is on exploring the urban, architectural, and infrastructural design changes that would occur as a result of grafting 3MF systems onto a city. And now I'll present to you a vision of what things could look like. As my plane is about to land, I flip through my research files and find an early plan for transforming Toronto into a 3MF city. It's the year 2050 and Toronto is on the cutting edge of the 3MF revolution. I'm the director of urban farming in Moscow where we've just experienced our first food shortages, so I've decided to come to Toronto to see how 3MF works here in a cold climate city just like mine. As darkness falls, the city glows green. At night, the bioreactors are lit artificially by wide-spectrum LEDs. Algae are a tough plant that can withstand the 24-hour growth cycles. It wasn't until Toronto detoxified its bio-waste that they were rediscovered as streams packed with nutrients and fertilizers for plants. Shortly after, algae farming exploded onto the urban scene, fed by Toronto's own bio-waste, collected sunlight, and CO2 leached from the city's air. As I wake up, I roll back the curtains of my hotel room window and catch my first view of the glistening surfaces of Toronto's hybrid solar concentrators. The devices are used to focus sunlight and transport it via fiber optics through the outer skin of buildings and into microcrop farms on the inside. Solar generated electricity and now pure sunlight have become the new lifeblood running through the arteries of this city. Today I'm touring Ontario Place, an experimental 3MF community for people willing to give up old lifestyles and invest in one that tries to find a more ethical way to coexist on this planet. As I enter the restaurant pavilion, I see people eating all kinds of insect foods. I still don't get how people can eat insects, but then again 25 years ago I'd cringe at the thought of eating raw fish. And today I love sushi. As we begin our tour with the architect of this tower, she starts to explain that mixed use and 3MF have a symbiotic relationship. The algae core housed inside of this building feeds off of building biowastes like grey water, black water, and exhausted air. And a building housing a community that lives and breathes 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, provides an uninterrupted source of these types of biowastes and exhausts. As we exit the elevator, my feet touch grass and I look up to be amazed. We join a small class of kids whose teacher is the building's urban farmer. He explains that they grow aquacrops like algae and terra crops such as grass, vines and shrubs, which are all used to produce green biomass for the building's micro-livestock farms. As we enter the building's micro-livestock hatchery, to euthanize the crickets, the temperature in the incubator is lower to the point that they fall asleep and then further until they freeze. From there, the insects are directly processed into protein flour. The architect explains that because insects are cold-blooded, they spend at no energy heating their bodies, and as a result they're capable of converting feed, feed into meat up to five times more efficiently than traditional livestock. Our last stop on the tour is the local food market on the ground floor of the building. The architect tells me they're always experimenting with new species of insects and new recipes. The neat thing about Toronto is that many of the small communities have their own experimental cuisines. As we leave Ontario Place and walk back through the restaurant pavilion, I come across this year's winning recipe for the UN's food ration contest. It's a single cookie that meets an adult's nutritive and calorie requirements for a day. I pick up the cookie and take a bite. And as I do, new guests that are just entering the pavilion look at me in disbelief as I eat my first insect food.